first year we celebrated our 50th anniversary and I'd like to see us get 200 um, and beyond. I would definitely like to see us go another 50 years at least and I'd like to see us continue to grow in terms of how we serve our audiences. Planetariums were built in order to teach astronomy. They were built during the space race. Like that, that's sort of the whole reason they first existed. It doesn't mean we can't explore other ways of engaging people in our theaters. It doesn't mean we can't try new things and see what else we can do. We don't want to hoard this technology to teach astronomy if we can use it for other things. I mean, I sure hope we're still here. <laughs> that's number one. Uh, you know, it, I, I, I do hope that we can keep up with the current projector technology. When we had our Digistar 2, you know, we, we had it in there and it was 20 years old. Computers, when they're 20 years old, are so antiquated that it was really kind of you know, holding us back from being able to do more things than we wanted. So I'm really hoping that with this Digistar 5, you know, they've already come out with Digistar 6, so I'm hoping that we don't go 20 years before we can upgrade again. I'd like to see more um, exhibits, more displays um, that hold people's interest, especially uh, hands-on or interactive displays. The planetarium now has touch screens that uh, uh, the students and adults can use when they do come into the planetarium. Uh, getting the meteorite collection back on display, we're hoping that that takes place around July of 2019, which would be an anniversary for the landing on the moon. It'd be nice to see uh, a classroom added uh, with uh, monitors and computers that the students could use uh, so that they could spend maybe a couple of days a week here instead of just coming for a show um, to expand their knowledge base and their learning. What we want to do, and so by the way, if you happen to win the lottery, keep this in mind, we want to put an addition on it. We want an addition that the basics of it means that it's this, we can seat the same number of students, the same number of people as we seat in the dome. So this is good for school groups in particular before and after shows. So they can have discussions, lectures, whatever, either before a show or after a show. It also helps us free up the lobby and so we don't have people staging in the lobby at the same time we've maybe got people exiting. And then we want some, we want a kitchen and some catering facilities because then we can do more events. Right now, if we have one event, it takes up the whole building. If we had other space, we could still have a show on Friday night. We'd still have a Friday night event. They could do a show either before or after our public show, but with another basically multi-purpose room that held 150 people or 250 if they were all standing up. Um, you know, we have a lot more flexibility. My vision would be to have this massive planetarium that covers this block of science theater to that end of, <laughs> of Farm Lane. This massive dome that lights up in the sky would be something that I envision for the planetarium and then more international, national engagement. And I think that all funnels into, I'm hoping that we can continue to have that historical place. Like we, we have it historically, but maybe what we're doing now, hopefully that'll be an important thing in the future, that we at least are engaged in helping in that conversation. I don't want us to be the only one. That's, that's not what planetariums are about. We're all collaborative. We're all friends. We all love each other. I, I, I'd like us to still be sort of there at the forefront of like, what can we do with the planetarium and how can we continue to make them engaging.